Of you lovely people who have been watching my channel, welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Tavala and I usually make vlogs in order to share my journey through medical school with you guys. In the seven days before my final medical school exams series, I want to capture a realistic image for you guys of what actually goes on behind the scenes of someone grinding in order to become a good doctor. If that sort of thing interests you, then I hope you will continue to keep watching. Today is five days before the exam that's supposed to test us on all areas that we've covered at medical school. We are talking the cardiovascular system, the respiratory system, the brain, the GI tract, your muscles, your bones, infections, professionalism, everything. Therefore last night as well as this morning I've been going over one of the official past papers which is designed to help us test our own knowledge in these said areas and it's something for us to learn from. When I sat the exam in March, admittedly I didn't do a single past paper, therefore I feel a lot more prepared this time round. I'm doing okay in the past paper, I don't want to jinx anything, but I feel that the questions I have seen are related to content I have gone over. Fingers crossed it stays that way. Speaking of being up this morning, it is still really early where I am, my entire family is still asleep, therefore I'm going to try and keep my voice down a bit. Also I know that one of you guys said that I'm really softly spoken in one of our previous videos. I'll tell you a secret, everyone is softly spoken when they don't want their family to know that they're vlogging instead of revising. Facts. Once again my alarm went off at 5 in the morning, I chose to ignore it. I chose to snooze it but it's one of those clocks that you can't actually snooze, you either wake up and you turn it off or it keeps ringing and ringing and ringing and you just get annoyed and you still don't wake up. So I turned that off real quick because it was still kind of dark outside and then on my windowsill which is right by my head where I see there was what sounded like an injured baby magpie and then obviously I had to give that some attention so I woke up that magpie or natural alarm system whatever you want to call it then flew away and then I could hear loads of crows and here's the thing I don't even have that many crows in my area but something peculiar must have happened for them to be screaming about like that at nearly six in the morning so that woke me up but this time for real and I'm grateful for that However, one thing I have realised is during this whole quarantine period where a lot of people are not leaving the house, I have noticed that there are quite a lot of injured birds in my area at least. These tend to be the smaller wild birds rather than the big ones like the crows which we've just talked about. My theory for this is the hot weather as well as the fact that if not many people are leaving the house, there aren't that many people in order to feed the birds or just throw food around in the streets which the birds then eat. I don't know about you guys but seeing injured animals makes me feel a certain way. It makes me sad. So I just wanted to remind you guys to be mindful of other living organisms. If you have the means to do so, please keep some water out. If you can and you want to, then keep some food out as well. Obviously don't be illegal about it. There are some things like wild bird feeders and stuff that you can actually put in your garden or hang up wherever you are outdoors. But read the laws in your area to see if you can actually get into trouble for feeding certain types of birds. Obviously it doesn't even just have to apply to birds, it could be to other wild animals as well depending on where you live and what you do see. Something I saw really upset me the other day, basically up my road uh, where people used to feed like pigeons and stuff someone had put a lot of rat poison so there were some pigeons like looking at the rat poison contemplating whether or not they should eat it I'm hoping no one ate it I don't know if anyone ate it it's totally probable that either the pigeons or some other animal came to eat those I don't know the fact that someone wanted to kill wild animals really upset me so yeah if you are one of those people who throw rat poison where you shouldn't be throwing it then Please don't do that, it's not nice. So yeah, I've spoken enough about birds and now I'm going to get back to revision. But before we do that, let's just say hello to our lovely guest. He's not planning to stay around for too long now. On day one of this series, I told you guys it was going to merge into form one big volcanic eruption. But things have changed. He's a lot calmer now, as you guys can see. 
and a lot less painful, which is great for me. I didn't have any sleep disruption last night, which is why I'm in a chapsy mood. That's all good news. I'm going to keep hydrated in order to make sure my skin is getting all the water to wash away any toxins in my blood. And on that note, I'm going to get back to revision now for real. Also guys, I received a parcel which I want to unbox for you guys. I'm really excited about it. So if you're interested in finding out what that is, keep on watching. The benefit of waking up so early in the morning is you get to have breakfast twice. <laughs> Hi guys, I'm back. Unlike yesterday, I've actually managed to have some caffeinated tea, which is really amazing. I actually feel like myself. I'm not overly tired and my concentration is decent. It's been pretty nice studying out here. At the moment, there weren't really anyone out in their gardens, which means I get some quiet time, peace of mind, and I get to listen to the birds. Also, what I've done here, I'll show you guys, is I've put this, um, scarf here so that I get some more shade and I also get to put my legs out in the sun make sure I get that vitamin D I will show you guys but girl oh my god there are two magpies hold on all right they're gone now I forgot what I was saying um I will show you guys how I'm catching the sun on my legs, but with quarantine, your girl really hasn't had a need to expose her legs to people, so... In other words, they're hairy. You know how I told you guys that everything happens for a reason? <gasps> Hi! Hey baby red guys. Hi. Okay, bye. You know how I told you guys that everything happens for a reason? Over the last couple of days, I've been thinking about what it is that God has been trying to teach me over the last two months or so. And what I've been doing is comparing my situation now to what it could have been had I passed the exams in March. If I had passed the exams in March and with electives and all the other medical school stuff being cancelled, I probably would have been eligible to start working as an F1 doctor sooner. And here's the thing, I live with a vulnerable adult at home. I always thought in mind that when I become a doctor, at least initially, I want to stay at home because, you know, a new job and it's supposed to be really stressful. I wouldn't have all the mechanisms in place in order to make sure that I cope with the new pressure well. So I doubt that I would have been able to start work sooner in this situation and in this climate. Also because six years is a long time and I think straight after setting exams and stuff I would have wanted to just chill out for some time. In medicine you're going to be working really really hard and I wanted to take that couple of months or so off in order to just recharge properly, do all the things that I wanted to do that I didn't get time for during medical school. And then if I did that, then I'd actually not resent starting a hectic job. So I'm thinking if I were to just delve into my hobbies between March and August, that's a very long time in order to just forget things I had crammed for before. So in a way, I'm actually grateful that I didn't pass that exam in March, which I was cramming for. Normally what happens after a cramming exam is I forget whatever I've learned. And that does mean that every time I have an exam, I have to relearn some things. I make good notes, so usually that's not a problem for me. But it's not something that's sustainable as a doctor. I did doubt at some point that, you know, if I'm just cramming for exams, what's going to actually happen when I become a doctor? And, and my colleagues are like, you learn on your job and whatever. I know that as a doctor, you are constantly learning, but I don't want to start my job knowing that I might be prone to making mistakes due to lack of knowledge or whatever. And I'm really glad that 
this is something I've reflected on before becoming a doctor. And so thinking about it, I'm really grateful that I'm having this time in order to learn every single topic rather than just like the main few that I thought would come up in the exams that most of us prepare really well for. I have more time now to learn some of the rare conditions as well, know how to identify in the clinical setting. And for this exam, I'm not trying to cram, as I told you guys two months ago, that I do want to be doing some work every single day, which means that I'm going back and reviewing things that I covered weeks ago, two months ago, and whatnot. And this means that I'm more likely in order to retain this information and commit it to my long-term memory. And that really solves the fears and the problems that I thought might arise in the clinical setting of me like, forgetting some things or not remembering things clearly enough. I've also been taking this whole concept of space repetition a bit more seriously. With cramming, space repetition isn't something that's really in place. So my hope is, fingers crossed, that even after these exams, I'll still brush up on the knowledge. Everything I've got in this little folder here and I've got some notes on my iPad as well. It's always possible for me to like scan these and have it on my iPad so that on my commute or whatever I can just casually look back at notes. My commute is actually going to be a long thing if I'm fortunate enough to become a doctor. So yeah, I hope this acts as a reminder for you guys to focus on the positive things in your life. In any situation, even if you initially think of it as a bad situation, Ask yourself, what is there that I can learn from this? What is the good thing I can take away from this? How can I turn my lemon into a lemonade? I think it's time for me to go and unbox that parcel now. Oh my god, why am I so nervous about it? I usually just like, tear my parcels apart. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I think it's because I've worked really hard in order to be able to afford for it. The I don't know, it feels like a reward to myself. Oh my god, okay. So let's go in, unbox that thing. Hey everyone, grab your tea. Mm. And relax. As I told you guys before, what I'm going to do today is unbox the parcel that came yesterday. So this is the MacBook Air. I've had it since my first year of university, which it's been a long time. The reason I bought this is because at my university it was pretty much fashionable. Everyone had a MacBook. Whenever our lecturers came in, they were like, oh my God, are you guys all sponsored by Apple? And sadly we weren't. So let me go bring the box. Before I tell you, good luck. Aww, thank you for blessing me. Yeah, oh no, this is fine. Okay, I think this is probably upside down. Where does this go? Okay. Are you ready? Do you want to do it? Go and take it out. <laughs> Ooh. Mashallah. Okay, oh. Yeah, you can pull this all the way around. I think. I'm so excited. <laughs> Relax. Are you excited? Yeah. yeah. Okay, this is it. Oh my god, it's so small and cute. <laughs> okay, what happens here? Ooh. Hey, you want it in it? Monica. No, I need to move it so I can oh, access the laptop. Yeah, yeah. Oh, this is a cow, isn't it? Oh my god, look how shiny that is. Oh my god. <laughs> I don't want to transfer anything from there to here because I have loads of notifications on that and that that laptop is pretty much all completely full so in the exam I want there to be nothing on it just the exam stuff and then 
By exam stuff, I don't mean notes, I mean the actual software to sit the exam. So then on the day, I just use that rather than installing lots of different things and then it may be freezing or whatever. Because the problem with my laptop currently is that it's really slow. So even if I'm editing, trying to study, watch anything, everything's really slow. Okay, so this is basically what it looks like. It's quite a nice wallpaper. Do you like it? Mm -hmm. um, I think so. My garden feels <laughs> Thank you for joining me. We're gonna need like a cover for this and stuff. What is this? I can see my desktop on the keyboard. This is really strange. This has got like touch screen stuff which I wasn't aware of. I've never really checked out the MacBook Pro simply because I wasn't planning on getting it for another while at least. But yeah, I'm shook. Whoa, this is actually really cool. <laughs> actually, I've seen this before. I've seen the volume being adjusted. I had a friend, Ipsmo, over and he had the, well not this iPad Pro, but I think another one. And he was just like adjusting the volume from just swiping on his keyboard and I was just so like weighted out by it. But, oh my God, this is amazing. Good grammar and spelling are important, but if you want to write essays that- I'm really, really grateful for the arrival of this laptop in time for my exam next week. I'm really hoping this laptop lasts me a long time as the other one did. I'm not too sure what I'm going to do with the other one. I might give it away or I might use it as a backup. I'm not too sure. But yeah, I'm overwhelmed that I get a new baby. Hmm. Where are you looking? No, I'm just thinking. Oh, okay. I'm picturing nature of the relation. Are you imagine? So that's retinopathy and then type 2 tends to affect the macula. So that's maculopathy. Oh yeah, there we go, yeah, type 2 and type 1. Yeah, oh, there you right. forget that, even I remember it. <laughs> also avoid a torvastatin or any statins in pregnancy because that can stop the synthesis of cholesterol and fats in the newborn. If the LFTs increase by more than three times the upper limit, then you stop the atorvastatin because that means that the atorvastatin is doing far too many bad things to the liver in that patient. Otherwise, you continue it. Um, so it's about balancing the uh, risks and benefits. 5-HT3 antagonist is cyclizing, no, 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 on Dantichuan, things that end in Sichuan. And it's usually for nausea and vomited related to chemotherapy because it acts on the chemo receptor trigger zone in the medulla. Yes, I got it, yes, yes, yes. At this moment I'm pretty much an autopilot when it comes to signing into Parsnet and then making notes from that onto my iPad Pro. It's not so much making notes from scratch, it's more just sort of me looking at existing notes. If I've got a question wrong on Parsnet or if I just feel like I want to brush up on that topic. I'm going to do some questions on cardiology because I haven't finished all of them yet. Instead of just doing a whole topic in one go, what I'm trying to do is doing a bit of every Topic. I might do cardio today and then tomorrow I might do gastro and then I'll attempt some questions on all the topics, so on and so forth. <laughs> I was thirsty. Okay. Maybe if I put my hair down, I can look a little bit more presentable for you guys. 
I hope from this vlog you guys have been able to see what I've been up to five days before my exam next week. I hope you've taken away a lesson or two or you've been inspired in some way. I'm really appreciative for the support that so many of you guys have been showing on my channel and I hope you guys are excited to share more of my journey with me. I'm hoping that with this baby here i'm able to produce even better content for you guys in the next couple of months in order to join the journey make sure you guys have hit that subscribe button and you smash that notification bell you'll see me in the next one Mwah.